this man vomited up his own brain. After this, he developed a fungal infection and eventually moved to Chile. He's a legend in the world of neuroscience, and his name can still be found in modern medical textbooks. Meet Phineas Gage. In 1848, this guy became living proof that a brain isn't such a vital organ. In this video, you'll find out where's the personality switch in a human brain installed? How can a hole in your skull affect your character? How can you live without a heart? And most importantly, what will happen to your body if some organs are removed? In the evening of September the 13th, 1848, Dr. John Harlow was called away on an emergency. A young man was suffering from a severe head injury. But when Harlow entered the hospital room, he wasn't prepared to see what he saw. Both the patient and the bed he was lying on were blood-soaked, and it was hard not to notice an open wound on the top left of the man's skull. The patient, however, was conscious and even greeted the doc. That was Phineas Gage. Harlow's assistant, Dr. Williams, said that the patient had been vomiting blood and his brain. While Gage had been throwing up, a rounded teacup of his brain matter had simply leaked out through the wound. Dr. Harlow cleaned it by removing bone fragments, coagulated blood, and around 30 grams of brain matter. After this, Gage was still alive. Despite having a hole in his head, he could speak and knew exactly who he was and what was going on around him. But how did Gage get injured in the first place? Gage told Dr. Harlow that he worked with explosives. He was part of a crew whose task was to blast rock out of the way for new railroad tracks to be laid down. To do that, he drilled a hole in the rock, then packed it with blasting powder and sand, and then used an iron bar to tamp it down. But something went wrong that day, and the powder inside the rock detonated sooner than planned. The iron bar that was a bit more than a meter long, three centimeters in diameter, and weighing six kilograms, momentarily flew out of the rock right through Gage's head and landed 90 meters away. The bar penetrated the man's left cheek, shot behind his eye socket, and out of the top of his skull. This left an exit wound in Gage's head. As a result, about 7% of his brain matter was damaged. But that was just the beginning. On the 12th day after the tragic accident, Gage's condition suddenly worsened. He slipped into a coma. Dr. Harlow noticed that his left eye became more protuberant, which looked very strange. After a while, there appeared fungi sprouting out from his wounded brain. The patient developed a cerebral abscess that was only growing in size. When Dr. Harlow laid his skull open, another 250 milliliters of pus and blood was immediately discharged. To prevent the further spread of infection, the doc had to remove some other brain tissues. In total, approximately 11% of Gage's white matter and 4% of his gray matter were destroyed. Despite all this, a week later, Gage succeeded in raising himself up and even tried to walk. But can you really return to a normal life after surviving such a horrible injury? In 2012, a research team created a 3D model of Gage's skull trauma. They found out that the iron bar damaged the man's left frontal cortex. As we know today, the frontal lobes subserve decision-making and executive control and regulate emotions. And Gage's personality traits truly changed. He became rude and short-tempered. He couldn't restrain himself anymore. He started using obscene words way too often and forgot how to plan his next moves. Dr. Harlow concluded that he'd found the part of the brain containing the essence of the human personality. He even decided to publish his observations, but they were a bit of a stretch. Phineas Gage did change, but only temporarily. When he fully regained his physical strength, he got his former character back as well. 
It's all about brain plasticity, thanks to which our brain can move functions from a damaged area to other parts of the central nervous system. So, if an iron bar drills through your frontal lobe, it doesn't mean you'll instantly start cursing more than you normally do. By the way, the bar was also the thing that saved Gage's life. Yes, I know, it made a giant hole in his head. But since the bar was sharp and not blunt, it didn't shatter the skull, but went through it quickly and smoothly. Phineas Gage was released from the hospital 10 weeks after the accident. He recovered incredibly quickly. However, something in his life actually changed for good. Gage decided to start with a clean slate and moved to Chile to work as a stagecoach driver. Do you think it was his trauma that prompted him to relocate? And what would you do if you happened to lose one-sixth of your brain? Some parts of our bodies are not only unnecessary, they can also cause problems. And the thing is, we got them at a particular stage of evolution when they were still helpful. But now these body parts are just as useful as the long-haired one in the black-eyed peas. And it's all because of our modern eating habits. For example, wisdom teeth. When they start cutting through, the pain makes you want to grab hold of the nearest sharp object and get rid of them. And above all, this suffering is meaningless. Our diet has long shifted to soft food and people no longer need powerful jaws. Over time, they've shrunk and the wisdom teeth struggle to get squeezed into the tooth row, like Beijing residents into a subway car. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you fall on your back? Well, the second one after, I hope my iPhone is not in my back pocket right now. It's undoubtedly, please don't let it be my tailbone. A tailbone is the fused vertebrae of a tail, long lost in our evolutionary history. Now, its only task is to painfully remind you in every accidental fall that you are nothing but a monkey's descendant. What about an oracle? How much money did it take to decorate this worthless piece of flesh with earrings and piercings for it to make at least any sense? This part of the ear is controlled by special auricular muscles. Other mammals use them to detect prey and predators. But people lost the ability to use those muscles. That's why when we get a job with a smiling company's CEO, we can't identify that the boss will make our lives a living hell in the future. And what about Mr. Appendix? What could this guy possibly do except inflict pain and tear itself apart? Many years ago, an appendix might have helped people digest fiber-rich plants, but today it's not part of the human digestive system. So the conclusion is obvious. We've got to fire you, mister. And the appendix is not the only organ that Mother Nature is long overdue in disposing of. So what organs can we live without? If you tell your spleen you want to say goodbye to it, it'll start assuring you that you won't find a replacement. But you will. Your bone marrow can easily replace it. In the early stages of embryo development, the spleen is responsible for producing blood cells, erythrocytes and leukocytes. However, later on, the bone marrow takes over this job and the spleen remains only a blood reservoir. But the spleen also produces antibodies. So without it, you'll start to get sick more often than you breathe. Speaking of the lungs, our body is not a Noah's Ark. Who's to say it's necessary to enter it in pairs? We can make this work even with one lung. Both lungs share the same structure and can remain fully functional without each other. If you lose one of them, the remaining lung will expand slightly to occupy the space left. However, due to shortness of breath, you'll have to do everything you're used to doing much slower, not to mention doing sports. And the breakup of this sweet couple won't be a sad experience either, because we can live with one kidney, or even with none at all. Then dialysis, renal replacement therapy, will help remove waste from your body. But you'll have to renounce the desire to sit in a bar with a glass in one hand and a cigarette in the other. Yeah, it ain't easy, but life is enough. 
Even going around without a stomach is no big deal. If there's a necessity to remove the stomach, surgeons attach the esophagus directly to the small intestine. It's just that you'll have to do without your favorite dishes and go on a strict diet. Eat more soft food, porridge, and take vitamins. But can a human being live without the most essential organ? Is it possible to live without a heart? Jim Linsky could do it, at least for a little while. While you're afraid that your iPhone will die in the middle of a funny TikTok video, this guy could have his heart discharged. In 2015, Jim was implanted with a mechanical heart pump when he was only 19. Before that, Jim suffered three life-threatening cardiac arrests. He was one of the youngest people in the UK to have a mechanical heart pump. Currently, the waiting list for a heart transplant in the country contains the names of around 300 people, and there's a dire shortage of donor organs. Therefore, as a temporary measure, many of them are provided with a mechanical pump, which helps maintain blood circulation. With its help, Jim continued to live waiting for a transplant, but the guy had to face some inconvenience. Jim always had to carry a backpack with a device with wires that came from his body to a power pack. When a person is asleep, the batteries recharge. The heart is connected to the power grid via an orifice in the torso. This gives up to 10 hours power the following day. Every day, things like taking a shower were challenging for Jim. He had to put the batteries in a waterproof bag first. Unfortunately, Jim passed away in 2019. He was still on the waiting list for a heart transplant. Before the heart pump developed complications, it had been keeping the guy alive for four years. Better mechanical heart pumps are still under development, but currently it's possible to live without a heart for a relatively long time. So we have a lot of organs we can do without, but don't hurry to get rid of them.